and certainly the, 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 the wider political discussion, strategic discussion in, in the area is, um, is putting things on a, on, a, on a very different par. You know, interestingly enough, um, <laughs> Greece has always been on the side of the Palestinians 100 percent. I'm not sure if, if they were anti-Israeli because they were pro-Palestinian or they were pro-Palestinian the other way around. Um, but uh, but now, now, now Greece has uh, invented Israel, um, as has the Republic of Cyprus done. Um, you know, Greece only recognized Israel the year in 1996, um, and, and for the next 10 or so years, relations were, if lukewarm, at, at best. Um, now it's a new thing. They invented Israel when the whole of the world is deconstructing Israel. Um, and uh, and uh, so I'm, I'm not quite sure about the, the evaluations. Um, of, um, of foreign policy um, in the area. But this leads me to, 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 um, to the second thing you were saying regarding the peace dividends and all. Um, certainly the, the new terrain um, or environment surfacing in the Middle East um, and in the wider areas is, is one that, uh, that um, introduces too many unknown factors. So perhaps, perhaps Turkey would have a greater interest in, uh, in having a footing um, in, um, in, in a way that perhaps it did not um, in the past. Specifically concerning um, the airspace, um, there's a political argument and there is a legal argument. The legal argument is, is pretty clear. Um, yeah. It is very difficult, if not impossible, um, to, to sustain the, the Greek argument regarding the breadth of the airspace uh, of 10 nautical miles, specifically that being different from the breadth of the territorial sea. So legally speaking, I don't think that even Greece has illusions anymore regarding that. If a package deal were to be to be uh, sought, then uh, then certainly Greece needs that that knows that this is going to be um, lost, quote unquote, um, and it would and it would perhaps be a balancing factor in the very strong otherwise arguments that Greece holds on other issues like like the continental shelf. Um, I, I'm usually asked why do do dogfights um, take place all the time. <laughs> Short answer: I don't know, of course, and, and, and thankfully I don't, because obviously, you know, it means that uh, that um, things are well guarded as secrets. Um, however, um, what I hear and what I what I think sounds like a plausible factor is is well, two or three things. One is that. Um, there has always been two different poles of policy in Turkey between the army and within the army, the Air Force, which is a very different genre, and the government. So perhaps it's in, in, in a way uh, it has a mind of its own. Um, um, secondly, so, so that, that, that pertains to, to very much a, a domestic discussion as well. Um, secondly, because of the legal argument that, um, that this airspace has to be challenged, legally speaking, has to be challenged, because otherwise Turkey would go back to its position before 1973 as a tacit agreement. Uh, you know, the, 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 uh, since 1936, uh, Greece has the, um, the, the, the difference in width. And um, so until 1973, Turkey was um, um, it was basically tacitly agreeing to this, so it doesn't want to go back to this position. It certainly needs to, to, to challenge it, legally speaking. And, um, and um, um, there are other arguments, strategic arguments I hear about uh, um, uh, keeping balances, about rate rating its position, um, this and that. Now, it would certainly be very, very practical if we deconstructed the, the, the airspace dispute and it would, it would lead to a peace dividend and it would lead to a great reduction in, in, in expenses uh, at this moment. Um, in, <laughs> last year in Athens I, I had a, a very humble suggestion which I repeated a couple of times this year and, and forgive me the naivete of, 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 uh, of an academic, I, my suggestion was that uh, the, the, the Greek state for one day, one day does not repel um, Turkish fighters, um, and, and one day, just symbolically, yeah? and, um, and the money gained from this, which amounts to thousands and thousands of euro in kerosene, uh, it donates to a Turkish orphanage. And then let's see how the Turkish government reacts to that. Yeah. I know it's a naive thing, but yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Um, so I think it has a lot of symbolic, uh, symbolic nature. These this, this dogfights are, are, bear a lot of symbolism, and, and, and certainly there are poles within uh, the Turkish apparatus, not governmental necessarily, that, um, that have seen things very differently um, in, um, uh, within the historical framework. So perhaps they need to reiterate also their relevance in things. Um, but thankfully, I don't know. Yeah.
Hello. Um, I <laughs> I found your uh, inheritance metaphor to be very interesting and kind of thought about it. Um, though in a case of cooperation, I mean, be this in the area of hydrocarbon extraction in the Mediterranean or any other economic, so to speak, area, I'm wondering how how sovereign these two countries actually would be to govern um, a shared economic advantage, especially in the field of energy, which is um, very, very speculative, um, like big game sort of field. And the reason why I'm asking this is um, the EU factor. I mean, the presence of the EU as a supranational um, limitation acting over, over um, such a cooperation, I'm just wondering how, how you, how sovereign you think Turkey and Greece would be in a situation like this? My suggestion is that both countries are in dire need of, of re-evaluating their perception of sovereignty. I think, I think both countries have, have been fixated with this sovereignty thing um, for different reasons, from different standpoints, perhaps in Turkey's case, over the, the, you know, the sever mentality and all this. Um, but, uh, but my concrete suggestion would be to start rethinking about sovereignty. Um, Greece has certainly rethought about sovereignty when it joined the EU, where uh, sovereignty reduction schemes exist by law. Um, and, um, and, and, and Turkey doing so as a candidate state would, would certainly um, need to reevaluate this um, sovereignty uh, perception. Um, secondly, sovereignty reduction um, or, or sovereignty perception change is, is certainly going to be needed in principle within um, the new understanding of, of law and politics in the international environment. What I mean to say is that not only the EU is, is about sovereignty reduction. Um, but specifically nowadays, sovereignty is being challenged over its, um, its balancing with human rights, environmental issues, uh, regional stability, and perhaps even all this um, uh, democracy um, uh, discussion. So effectively, if we start prioritizing all this, and by human rights, I mean it in the wider sense, um, access to natural resources, um, um, financially weaker populations um, gaining out of it, um, as well as environmental degradation schemes, which, which are very much in place at the moment, uh, protection schemes, I mean. Um, and, and their need to be prioritized, not only as part of the law of the Sea Convention, which clearly prioritizes it, um, but also under um, various other international treaties. Um, I think it's high time for the states to, to rethink uh, sovereignty. And if, and if hopefully they are the part of an EU together, then obviously sovereignty is deconstructed anyway. Hmm? Thank you very much. Uh, well, I would uh, like to commend you. I mean, I appreciate what you've mentioned, and uh, in most parts of it, maybe even all, I converge. The, the only thing uh, that I think just to complement the picture, the larger picture, I would suggest uh, to know your views on the other nations in the region, that's Eastern Mediterranean, the Levant coast, that Lebanon, Israel, Egypt in the south, and then maybe Syrian uh, opinions on the Eastern Mediterranean continental shelf and uh, zones, and uh, how they, they view the thing. And one more uh, point, the second question would be about, just to complement the Aegean uh, sea border demarcation issue uh, around the Dodecanese and the uh, most recent, let's say about uh, a decade old, uh, problem of the EMEA and uh, the uh, Turkish Greek sea borders. I would like to know your opinion on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll try to be brief because I'm taking Maria's time. But um, yeah. Um, now, um, from what I understand, because again, I'm, I, I don't really know what's what's going on in the in the national discourse of of, of these countries. Um, first of all, they have a lot on their plate as things stand. Syria certainly does. Egypt does. Israel always does. And, um, and Lebanon, compared to Israel, always does. Um, the uh, let me be concrete. First, the Lebanese parliament 
has not ratified yet the Republic of Cyprus-Lebanon delimitation agreement. However, very uncharacteristically for Lebanese national politics, it was also the first time that Lebanon passed a natural resources law um, that, um, that in principle took um, in consid into consideration the, um, the, the, the uh, delimitation with Israel. Now, that is a first in Lebanese politics, and that's very commendable. Um, they, they sometimes don't have a parliament for a long time, so they, I don't know when the, the, um, the, the uh, agreement is going to be ratified. Um, in, um, in, in Egypt, um, as the case with Israel, they, again, they, they, they um, delimited things with the Republic of Cyprus in, um, in clear understanding of the other agreements that the Republic of Cyprus was pursuing. Um, the only thing that Egypt has, has done is, is it, it joined voices with Turkey regarding the southeastern, um, well, southeastern Aegean, northeastern Mediterranean. Um, it's not technically Aegean anymore, but around the area of uh, Meis, Castellorizo, where um, there is an, an islet to the southeast of it called Strongili that both the Turkish government and the Egyptian government declared formally they're not going to take into consideration if, um, um, if delimiting um, um, EZ in the area. And this is extremely important because unless you take this islet in full effect, um, then this, this whole discourse about the, the, the Cyprus EZ and the Greek EZ merging, which of course has no footing in the law anyway, you cannot, you cannot support it otherwise. So it's of crucial importance to take into consideration both Castellori's or Mays and given full effect, which will never be done by any court, uh, and I can, can explain later if you like why, uh, but to, to give a short version about having to do with ratio of coasts, um, you have 1,100 kilometers of an Anatolian coast and a little island on the other side, and for other reasons, um, then, then Egypt and Turkey said in both cases they're not going to understand them as taken full effect. Um, so um, um, yeah, both positive and negative, if you like, um, developments in that area. And finally, regarding your, uh, um, uh, what was it? Um, yeah, okay, that's it. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. In there is no demarcation at the moment, well, unless, yeah. That's why, I mean, huh. do, do you see hmm. any uh, possibility that they could be demarcated in the future? Is there any effort to do that? Yeah, well, uh, yes, behind closed doors. Uh, for the first time, we have this these meetings really behind closed doors. I mean, it's, it's wonderful that we know nothing about all this. Uh, the only understanding I have, which, which I think is correct, is that um, there have been one and one steps taken back from both sides. In other words, Greece, in those secret talks, have for the first time um, accepted the possibility that a solution will be a package solution. It would not refer only to the continental shelf, but to the whole thing, earth space, territorial sea, continental shelf and all. And Turkey has, in principle, agreed for a referral to The Hague. So, in a sense, behind closed doors, they, they both have, have shown a spirit of cooperation. How they're going to present it to the domestic constituencies, especially Greece, is another issue. Yeah. And thank you.